Good. All right. Well, thank you. I'm so disappointed I can't be there with you all in person today. It looks like you're having a great time, uh, but I'm glad and thankful to everyone who allowed us to be able to attend these remotely. So my name is Darren Glass. I'm at Gettysburg College up here in Pennsylvania, and I'm here to talk to you a little bit today about shoots and ladders, um, something that you've, many of you have heard me talk about before uh, here at this group. Um, so shoots and ladders without shoots or ladders, but with multiple dice. And this is joint work with Stephen Lucas. Um, so just quickly to remind you how shoots and ladders works. There's squares from one to 100. Here's a typical board. You, spin a, you start at square zero, spin a spinner, and uniformly distribute a number between one and six. You move that number of squares up, the, up, and then either if there's a ladder, you climb up, shoot, you fall down. And the big thing that makes it mathematically interesting is that you must land on that final square, the number 100 square, exactly. You can't overshoot it. Um, or if you overshoot, you lose your turn. So a, couple, a few years ago, I think it was like 1998 when we had our last gathering for Gardner, uh, 13, I spoke to you guys about a version of this game where uh, you don't have any shoots and ladders and you just ask, what's the optimal spinner size? A bigger spinner means that there's a you know, higher chance of moving quickly up the board, but at the same time, a smaller chance of landing exactly and sort of, so you might get stuck for a longer period of time. And the big punchline for G4, G13 was that the optimal spinner size turns out to be 13. Um, after that talk, I started working on, with Stephen and I started working on what happens if instead of one spinner where it's uniformly distributed, you instead roll multiple dice. And in that case, uh, you know, this, it's a similar game, but now your numbers aren't uniformly distributed. And of course, if you roll two dice, you aren't going to get a one. So if you land on square 99, you're stuck. You're never going to get that one that you need to get to 100. So you'll be stuck forever. So in this simplified game, the question is, would you rather roll one six-sided die or two? That was the question we looked at. If you roll two dice, then you're going to move up the board really faster because you're going to get lots of eights, nines, tens. But at the same time, it'll be harder to land on this last square exactly, most likely and you might get stuck at square 99. So which one would you prefer, one die or two? And this was the question. And if I were there in the room with you right now, I'd have you all vote. And based on previous experience, about half of you would choose one and about half of you would choose two. And well, that actually turns out to be pretty darn close to the right answer. The correct answer actually is that you should choose one six-sided die, but it's really close. One die beats two dies, two dice 51% of the time. So you shouldn't feel bad if you chose two dice and got the wrong answer uh, because it is really close. We computed this using various Markov chain calculations. If anyone's actually interested, feel free to email me and I can give you the calculations. Um, we then looked what happens if you, have diff if you change the side of the die. And well, it's sort of interesting. I mean, basically for bigger dice, it turns out that you're more and more likely to want to choose a one die over two. Um, before then, from there, we then kept looking and said, well, what if we, instead of changing the side of the dice, we change the size of the board? So in this case, we asked the question, well, what if you have one six-sided die or two six-sided dice, and do you, which one is better for different board sizes? And maybe not surprisingly, it turns out that for a bigger board, the advantage of rolling two dice and moving up quicker um, moving up the board quicker outweighs the advantage of rolling one die um, and the not getting stuck at the end. And in fact, here's just a little simulation. These aren't simulations, they're actual Markov calculations that show that, well, you want to choose two dice if, it's, if the board has 116 or more squares and one die if it has up to 115 squares. So that was interesting and fun. But then, of course, the next question as a mathematician is, well, OK, what if there's more than two dice? What if you have three dice? Well, it turns out that you can do the same thing and you can do Markov chain calculations and get the exact probabilities. And maybe not surprisingly, if the board size is really big, you prefer three dice to two and two dice to one. And that sort of bigger boards, you prefer more dice because the chance of it will get bigger going up. Um, the chance of going up is, big, is bigger. If you notice these numbers, though, and this is, I think, what I thought th this crowd would be most, most interested in. If you notice these numbers, think about what happens on a board of size 600. If you have a board of size 600 and I ask you, would you rather roll one die or two dice, you should choose two. 
If I ask you, should you choose one die or three dice, you should choose one. If I ask you three dice or two dice, you should choose three. So there's this whole weird non-transitivity. And of course, you could turn this, and Martin Gardner would love to turn this into some game where I let you choose your number of dice, and then I choose my number of dice, and I can always beat you. And it's non-transitive. So that's fun. Um, let me just end with saying, you know, you might ask, what is the probability that you're going to get stuck on that six, last square, uh, that 99th square if you roll two dice? It turns out that it's 33.5%. Uh, this is if you have a board of size 100. But actually, it pretty much doesn't depend on the size of the board. That the probability of getting stuck on 99 is more or less independent of the board size. And, um, and, and, you know, and in fact, it's also more or less independent of the dice size. In fact, if the, number, the size of the dice goes to infinity, you can prove that it's actually one third of big boards. Um, we have a conjecture that I'll end with, which is that somehow that if you let the, the number of sides and the number of squares go off to infinity, the, you can figure out what is the probability of getting stuck or not getting stuck, of actually making it to that final square. And it's two thirds, yeah, you know, I just said it's one third that you don't, it's two thirds that you do, sixth, 11th, and these reciprocals of the harmonic number. And so this is a really neat way that that shows up. So uh, this is a really fun project. We hope to continue to generalize it. If anyone's interested in the details, normally I would say come talk to me in the book exhibit or over lunch. But since you can't do that, please email me dglass at Gettysburg or track me down. And thank you very much. <laughs>